All right then my friends, so you'll notice at the minute that if you refresh this page over here now, you shouldn't be able to get that workout data. And the reason we're not getting that workout data is because we locked it down on the back end. And unless we send that authorization header with the request, we're not gonna be allowed access. And the same is true for adding new workouts over here. So if I try to add one and press add workout, you'll notice all of this actually crashes now because there's some kind of error. So we need to fix that as well so that when we're trying to send these requests, we're adding this authorization header. Now, if the user's not logged in in the React application, then we just won't send the request, okay? So let's do that now, and we need to do it in three separate places. Now, those three places are the home page right here where we make this request. We need to send our authorization header right here. Also, inside the workout form over here where we try to add a new workout. We need the authorization header adding to this. And then finally, inside workout details, we try to delete a workout when we click on this delete icon. So we send the request right here. We need to also add our headers property inside here. So let's start over here in the home page first of all. So we need access to the user, right? And in order to do that, we need to use the use auth context hook and import that. So Let's import it first of all at the top. So I'm going to come up here and say import use auth context from dot dot forward slash to come out of the pages folder, then into hooks, then into use auth context. So then now down here, we only really want to try and fetch this if we have a user logged in, right? So what I'm going to do is grab that user from the hook right here. I'll say const user is equal to use auth context and invoke that. And then down here where I invoke this fetch workouts function, I can say if user, then we'll do this. So let's copy this or cut it and paste it in here. And since we're now using the user right here inside use effect, it needs to be added as a dependency. So now when this use effect function runs, if we have a value for the user, then we'll try to fetch the workouts. If we don't have a value for the user, then we'll never even try and fetch them in the first place. Now, we also need to send the authorization headers. So let's add a comma right here and then curly braces. And then we want our headers like so. And inside here, we need an authorization key. So authorization like so. And the value of this is going to be a template string, so backticks. So we can output a variable inside it. And remember, I said that this looks like this bearer, because this is a bearer token, then a space, and then the token itself. Now remember, we have access to the token on the user using the token property. So I can output a variable by saying dollar sign and then curly braces and then user dot token like so. So now we're sending this authorization header right here with the user's token. And we can grab that on the back end inside that middleware function that protects our API routes. And it will detect this. And if it's valid, then it's going to give us access to this endpoint. So then let me save that now. And in fact, before we try this out in the browser, I want to also update our other two components where we need this headers thing right here. So I'm actually just going to grab this right here and copy it so we can use it in those other components, starting with the workout form. All right then, so it's inside this handle submit form that we try to make this request right here. So first of all, let me add in that authorization header. And then also, we don't even want to try to do this if we don't have a user. So what I can say is right at the top of this function, after preventing default, I can say if we don't have a user, then basically we want to return out of the function so it doesn't fire the rest of the code. So if not user, then we're going to just return. And in fact, we'll also set an error. We will say set error, and the error is gonna be you must be logged in. So we'll see that beneath the form if we try to submit a workout without being logged in. And since we return here, we don't even try to make this request. Now we need to actually grab the user because we don't have that yet. So what I'm going to do is import it at the top. So import use auth context, and that comes from hooks use auth context. And then down here, we'll grab that. 
So const user is equal to use auth context like so. So now when we submit the form, we check we have a user, first of all. If we don't, we set the error and return. If we do, we send the bearer token in the authorization header. All right, so that's that one done as well. And then finally, let's go to workout details and add it over here as well. So we need our headers like so, which is an object, and then we'll paste in the authorization. But again, in this case, if we don't have a user, then we don't even want to do this. So we can say, if not user, then all we're gonna do is return like so. So that when we click that icon down here, and it fires this handle click function up here, if we don't have a value for user, then we will return and we don't even try to make this request. Now we need to actually grab this user again from the use auth context hook. So import use auth context, oops, let me get rid of that. Start that again, use auth context. And that comes from dot dot forward slash into the hooks folder and then use auth context. All right, so now we can invoke that down here, const user is equal to use auth context. All right, phew, so I think that is everything. We've done it in each of the three places, in the home page where we fetch all the workouts, in this page where we try to delete a workout, and also in the form um, component where we try to add a new workout. So let's give this a whirl in the browser. All right then, so right now we are not logged in. We can see the use is null and therefore we don't see the workouts. Now, if I try to add an exercise like so, add the workout, then we can see you must be logged in. So that's working. What I'm gonna do now is try logging in. So let's say Luigi at netninja.dev and then ABC, ABC, one, two, three, login. Okay, so now we are logged in, we can see that user. And if we go to the home page, we can see all of these now. I can now add a new one, hopefully. So I'm gonna say sit-ups, like so. The load is zero, the reps is 25. Add the workout, and now it works, we can add that. Likewise, we can also probably delete things as well. So before I delete it, what I'm gonna do is log out. Now, we still see these here because we've already fetched them in the past. But later on, what I'm gonna do is update our global workout state so that that goes back to nothing, essentially, so that when we log out, we don't see any again. But for now, we still see them because we already fetched them. And if I try to delete one now, then it's not gonna work because we can't delete them not being logged in. However, if I log back in, as Mario at netninja.dev, and then ABC, ABC123, log in, if I go home again, and delete this, now it lets me, awesome. So this is all working now. So we've secured the backend API routes so that only authenticated users can access that workout data. And we've also implemented that on the front end as well by sending that authorization header with the token.